What drives the selection between an ERV and an HRV? An HRV just exchanges heat. Uh, the heat exchanger is either polypropylene or aluminum. Um, all of the re energy recovery ventilators or heat recovery ventilators are basically a box with two fans in it, one blowing air in, one blowing air out of the house. And in between those two air streams is a heat exchanger. In HRV, the heat exchanger only exchanges the, the temperature, the, 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 the thermal energy of the air. And the outgoing air is waste to you at this point, uh, is warming the incoming air. Uh, an ERV is slightly more efficient because not only does it transfer the, the thermal energy in the air, but it also transfers the latent energy in the water vapor. So those heat exchangers are actually usually a cellulosic-based core that will allow some amount of water vapor migration from the outgoing airstream to the incoming airstream. They're a bit more efficient. The difference between them is an ERV core can't be allowed to freeze because it's got water inside and when the ice expands it damages the core. So it comes down to different manufacturers have got different temperature thresholds from where you can't use an ERV anymore. It comes down to how elaborate their defrosting and defrost sensing technology is in the unit. Um, so an, an ERV is more suitable to a cooling climate rather than a heating climate? ERVs do work better in cooling climates and ERVs work very, very well in heating climates up to a certain temperature threshold. And is. it varies by manufacturer. There are some manufacturers that can do all of New England with an ERV, no problem. There are others that when you start getting to, let's say, New Jersey, southern New York, Connecticut, is about the end of the ERVs and above that you do HRVs. Again, it depends, it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, but the, the, the factory reps always know. Um, the, the difference between the two is because you've got a little bit of water transfer, a late, you know, water can carry a lot of energy. The uh, water transfer in the ERV makes it a bit more efficient. To be honest, in a high performance house, the few percentage points of efficiency difference aren't that huge a player. Um, it's nice to get them, but if you're on the edge, uh, an HRV will still serve you really well. So you're really down to finessing small gains in uh, should you choose an HRV over an ERV in a certain application. Yeah, that's right. I, I think I would rather have a modest efficiency HRV that's properly designed into the house than the world's best ERV that was slapped in without much thought. The quality of the installation and the appropriateness of the design is vastly more important than the difference between the HRV and ERV. Because a lot of this does come down to occupant behavior too, doesn't it? When you're when you're talking about a high performance home. Absolutely, and, and you know, throughout the course of the day, or whether or not you've got guests over, or whether it's a retired couple or a couple or, or, or a family with young kids, the way this is usually accounted for is most uh, ventilation machines have got multiple speeds. And if it's, if it's a relatively quiet household with not a lot of moisture load, you start running them at low and medium speed. Meanwhile, if it's a house full of people or you have guests over or uh, you have a lot of showers going on or whatever, you run at medium and high speeds. It's usually how it's addressed. Okay, thank you.